Machen wir was Sinnvolles. Lasst uns mal schöne Rigs angucken. Da sehe ich uns. Los, wir gehen rein jetzt. 20, 20k Scheine, Rick. Ich bin gespannt. Was, was können wir bei 20k erwarten? Let's go. Hey everyone, welcome back. In our last video, you saw our insane sim rig from the inside. Now, today, let's take a look at it from the outside. If it's your first time here, then welcome. You're about to see something truly special. Das ist ja schon wieder so ein richtig krasses, immersives Ding. Aber ich möchte das so. Mm. Mm. We've got the Track Racer TR80. Now at the time of purchase, I believe that this was Track Racer's mid-range cockpit that they had available. During my time using this, I've had no issues with flex or instability whilst driving. Space-wise, they're not too invasive. This one's sitting at about just over 1.2 meters long. Being an aluminium profile rig, these do allow you a lot of flexibility when it comes to designing the cockpit you'd like. I've placed some vertical longer profile pieces at the back. These just allow me to adjust the height of my nets so I can match them according to the car that I'm driving. For our wheelbase, we're using the Fanatec DD1. Now, if you've got the budget, I'd say this is probably one of the best that you could go for. Und damit hat er sich gerade schon wieder keine Freunde gemacht. Von wann ist das Video? Von vor fünf Monaten. <lacht> the wheelbase does top out at 20 Newton meters of torque. However, I only find myself using about half of that. When it comes to using third-party wheels, you technically aren't locked into the Fanatec ecosystem here. However, you can expect to be paying a premium on top of your wheel purchase because you'll need to purchase the Fanatec Podium Hub, which you're looking at about another hundred or so dollars. Das finde ich übrigens super schade, dass das so häufig immer noch, auch in der heutigen Zeit, also in 2023, immer noch als das beste Zeug angeboten wird. Es hat seine Daseinsberechtigung, auf jeden Fall. Und das möchte ich auch an gar keiner Stelle in irgendeiner Form äh, dem absprechen. Aber ich finde es super schade, dass immer noch solche Videos kursieren, wo Leute sagen, das ist der beste Shit. Weil das ist es nicht. Und ich würde mir ein Bein abhacken und mir das Ding kaufen für das Geld. In der Preisrange. Würde ich nicht tun. Und das finde ich schade. Wobei das Wheel, also das BMW Wheel, das schon ein schickes Ding ist. Your pedals are probably going to be the most important part in your setup. And for me, I've chosen the Acetec Forte Load Cells. Now, this does come down to a matter of taste. If you're the kind of driver that enjoys a very stiff pedal, then these are definitely the ones for you. I can't recommend them enough. I've used a few load cell pedals now, and these by far stand out the most. I've had no issues whatsoever with these. They're just fantastic. Couldn't recommend them enough. Well, now that we've got the basic stuff down, let's get into the goodies. Das ist schon schick. Rixing Myaris Formula Rim. Das sieht aus wie das, äh, so ein bisschen wie das äh, von GSI. This would have to be my most premium wheel in the collection. I gotta say though, the paddle shifters on this thing are just fantastic. When shifting gears, they give you this, this firm, tactile response that I've honestly, I've not felt in any other wheel. Buttons also feel great, and the LCD display in the center is just fantastic. It's crisp, it's clear. When you use this wheel, you, you feel like you are using a premium wheel. There is honestly nothing really that I could fault on it. Next, we've got the Fanatec BMW GT3 wheel. This is my most used wheel, and a lot of you have seen by now that this usually acts as the centerpiece for our rig. Its biggest strength, I'd say, would have to be how comfortable this is to use over longer driving periods. I've done four, six-hour endurance races with this, and I've had no issues whatsoever. And when it comes to the paddle shifters, they've got a very spongy yet firm feel. I can't quite explain it, but it's just, it feels so comfortable to use. The buttons also feel great, and all the colors are completely customizable in the Fanalab software. 
When it comes to quality, Fanatec have done a fantastic job with this wheel. Naja, ich glaube, sonst hätte BMW das auch nicht durchgewunken. <lacht> da hat BMW, glaube ich, ein bisschen äh, auch mit Sprachrecht gehabt. Fanatec Club Sport RS. This will be the most versatile wheel in my collection. And I recommend this one any day to people that drive in multiple disciplines. The leather feels great when driving. And when it comes to the paddle shifters, they feel firm, but when pressed in, they have this spongy soft click, which like I said earlier, when it comes to long driving sessions, that kind of thing is what you want. The LED lights at the top of the rim are also a nice addition. They are fully customizable in the Fanalab software. Fanatec McLaren version two. This was the first wheel rim that I ever used. Although this wheel's made out of plastic, it does feel quite nice. Mm -mm. Nein, tut's nicht. Und für das Geld kriegst du was, was sich wirklich nice anfühlt. And I wouldn't das, say still also das habe ich selber gehabt. Nein. Cheap at all, but it does become quite uncomfortable to use on longer driving sessions. I have to say, probably due to the fact that the shift is a firm and hard. But look, for what you're paying, it is a fairly good wheel. With our nets, they're custom made. These things really do the job of bringing in that three-dimensional element into cool. the rig. Being able to look left and... Funny, auch die Idee ist cool, dass hinten einfach um, am Rig um, um, uh, alle Profile dran sind. Right, and see these right in front of me. And being able to touch them and see them bounce up and down as I hit curbs. It just brings this three-dimensional aspect to das the entire cool. experience. Richtig schön. And that's where the vertical pieces of aluminium profile on the rig come into play. They allow me to adjust the height of these so that I can always match them up with whatever car I'm driving at the time. With our center console, we've actually got two button boxes from Sim Racing for you. Basically, I attach these two button boxes at a diagonal angle on the rig. And then das hätte ich auch gerne, bin ich ganz ehrlich. Also, dass die rechts an der Seite so diagonal runtergehen. Aber dann wüsste ich wieder nicht, wo ich meinen Shifter und meine Handbremse hinmachen wollen würde. Da muss ich mal gucken, wenn die Jungs hier sind, ob wir da eine Lösung für finden. Das finde ich echt schön. The whole thing's been bolted down onto a piece of aluminium profile. That's a schön. That's richtig schön. Our driver's schick. side roll cage prop. It was really frustrating to build this from scratch, but you can't deny the results. Like the other props, it just gives that extra three-dimensional feel to the cockpit. The entire thing is made out of PVC tubes, so it doesn't reflect too much light. And the webbing was purchased from your average hardware store and stapled together. We've got the Philips Hue Light system. Now, although the results that you get from this system are great, I've got to say this. The program used to configure them is the most frustrating piece of software I've ever used. Mm. I feel like I'm playing a mini game trying to guess where exactly the lights need to be placed in order to get the correct illumination. And I hope that Philips do develop their software a bit better so that in the future it's a lot easier to customize these. But you can't argue with the results. Once you do get them working, it just looks fantastic and brings that extra bit of life into the picture. Das habe ich auch überlegt, ob ich das mache im neuen. So now you should have a pretty general idea about how this all comes together. I do want to acknowledge how this all started though. You see, one day I was just scrolling through YouTube, just looking at random videos, but then I saw this. <laughs> Da landet jeder mal, glaube ich. And to be honest with you, since then, the past 12 months have just been a blur. I mean, it's like I suddenly had this long life goal that I never knew I had just stuck in my brain and I could not stop until I did it. And now we have. So I think it's important to acknowledge what Race Beyond Matter did for us. He gave me a passion that I never thought that I had. So thank you. So that's everything I have for you today. I really hope that you found this video useful. And if you did, feel free to hit that subscribe button down there. It'll really help me out. And it'll notify you about our new videos when they come out. A lot of people have been asking me about the new episode of Rise. And I'm pleased to inform you that we will be filming soon. Hmm. If you are wanting to help out, you're more than welcome to. 
You just need to be from the Australian and New Zealand region, simply because of internet latency and ping. We don't want to see rubber banding or teleporting cars in the footage. It just, yeah, it's unfortunate. I wish that I could get all of you in on it, but that's just the way it is. So if you are wanting to help out, go ahead and hit that Discord link down there and we'll be in touch. But anyways, okay. that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, ich meine, über das Fanatec kann man sich streiten so, aber ist okay. Hat ja jeder seine persönliche Präferenz und seinen persönlichen Geschmack. War schon, ist, war, war und ist ein sehr, sehr geiles Rick. Sag ich einfach, wie es ist. Das äh, ist schon schick. Also ich hätte schon Lust, äh, das selber auch zu äh, nachzubauen. Ich muss immer daran denken, dass das streambar bleiben muss. Das heißt, wenn ich jetzt sage, so ich möchte jetzt darüber gehen, dass ich instant da reingehen kann und nicht irgendwelche Schienen und Gitter, weil ich kann, ich persönlich kann sowas auf den Tod nicht ab, wenn ich irgendwas bauen muss, bevor ich was machen muss oder möchte. Oh, da kriege ich gleich die Mäuse. Ey, nee, da kriege ich sofort die Mäuse, da ich wirklich überhaupt kein Interesse dran. Mm -mm. Aber es kann ja auch immer noch alles passieren. Also ich meine, wir bauen ja jetzt erstmal um quasi und dann schauen wir von da mal weiter, wie es dann, wie es dann aussieht. Also... Muss ja nichts Absolutes sein, ne? Also man kann ja immer noch was anbauen. Je nachdem, wie nachher der Platz aussieht. Das wird sowieso... Ähm... Bild.